Sometimes you come across a distribution and you just don't understand why it exists. And every time that happens, I usually utter the phrase, what the f*** is this distro? And I found myself saying this phrase so often, I decided to make a video series on it. So over the last few months, I've found really weird distributions to take a look at, and then I put them in this series. And sometimes the distributions surprise me. Sometimes they don't surprise me, and they're exactly as bad as I expect them to be. But today, today, my friends, well, let's just say this. I don't even know how to install software on this distribution we're going to show you today. Uh, I think I know how, but it hasn't worked for me yet. So it's an interesting distribution, to be sure, but um, I don't know why it exists. So let's go ahead and jump into 4M Linux and see if we can figure out what the f*** this distribution is all about. Okay, so we're going to be installing this in a virtual machine. and if you if you decide you're going to try this out, if you do decide to suffer through this along with me, you should definitely install it in a virtual machine because I can't verify if this distro is good as in free of malware or any of that kind of stuff. So install it in a VM first. I don't think it's going to be a, have any of that kind of nonsense on it because it was on the front page of DistroWatch and as we know, they are the paragon of virtue and would never promote a distribution that would harm your computer. Install in a virtual machine because there's not a lot of information on here. So let's actually, before we start this, let's go ahead and take a look at the website. This right here is the website. Now, you can understand when I saw this the first time, why my expectations for this distribution were so low. And it doesn't get better if you follow any of the links on here. There is an about page. That's all you get. And it does tell you what the 4M stand for. So this is 4M Linux. 4M Linux is a small independent. Note that it is independent because that's going to be a, a theme throughout the rest of this video. General purpose Linux distribution with a strong focus on the following 4M of computing. Maintenance, so System Rescue Live CD. Multimedia, full support for a huge number of image, audio, and video formats. Okay. Mult mini server for DNS, FTP, HTTP, MySQL, NFS, Proxy, SMTP, SSH, and Telnet. And Mystery, meaning a collection of classic Linux games. So one of these things is not like the other. Uh, <laughs> I, I will admit that I have looked at this distribution now for over an hour before I started recording this video because the last time I did one of these videos I got complained because I didn't do any research so this time I did some research and the one area that I didn't actually do any research on were the games so that should be an interesting thing for us to go through together outside of this page here we also have a, a help section which is at least it exists. Let's put it that way. I will say that it's not the worst documentation I've ever seen in my life. It's it's not. It's also I will and I'll show you this once we get to the installation. It is the easiest Linux install you'll ever face. It's literally three steps. That's literally it. You don't enter a username or a password. You don't give it a time zone. You do none of that stuff. It's literally partition and install. I'll show you here in a minute, but it's, I'm trying to find positive things and there are positive things. It was easy to install for sure. So there is some help on the website, which I will applaud them for because as we've seen in some videos in this series beforehand, that's not necessarily always a given. Uh, I will say that I could use better documentation because from what I can tell, even on the website, there's no instructions on how to install software. Uh, like I said, as far as I'm aware, now I have not read every single word of this. I will ad freely admit that, but I did search for the word install and I went through every single search results. So maybe I'm just missing it and it's completely possible. And I've also looked at the documentation that comes with the distro. So we'll, I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute. But other than that, the last thing we should look at here, and this is a big critique for me, 
is that there's not a download link. Yeah, there's not a download link. The only way you can download this from this page, as far as I'm aware, as far as I can tell, is to donate. And I was obviously um, not going to do that without knowing at least a little bit more about it. So uh, the only way I found to actually be able to download this thing was from DistroWatch and the direct download link that they always uh, supply every time there's an update. So I, I clicked here and downloaded it like so. But from the website, there doesn't appear to be a way to uh, actually download this directly from the website or from... I'm assuming that this means SourceForge because that's where the, the link from DistroWatch actually leads to. But again, why not supply the link? I'm assuming it's because they want you to donate, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that's an it's an interesting way to force people to download to to or most likely not download your distro. Anyway, so that is the website, such as such as it is. So let's go ahead and go over here to the VirtualBox and get this thing started. So we're gonna go ahead and get this as full screen as possible to get it, and you'll see what I mean by that a little bit later. So we're just gonna boot into 4M Linux with the default drivers. And as far as I can tell, it's actually installing all the software like this. Every time you boot into the live environment, it does this. And then it starts X. So it, this is an X org based distro. And by default, it uses the JWM window manager. Now, I have never tried JWM in my, my life. And I have no clue what it is or how to use it. It reminds me a lot of LXDE, quite a bit of LXD. It also reminds me a little bit of like it has some like early GNOME vibes because you'll see like if we click on the menu here, that's kind of a GNOME thing or uh, like a GNOME 2 thing, I guess. Like not anymore, obviously, but uh, something like that. So you have a menu here. But anyways. First time you start up into the live CD, it's going to ask you some questions. So it's going to ask you, do you want to change the, the key, English keyboard layout? And I do not want to change that. And then it's going to ask you if you'd like to set up a root password. And I'm going to go ahead and do this, yes. And I'll enter a password, my normal password. It's going to tell me it's too short. But it's also going to let me do it anyways, as far as I'm aware. It doesn't actually ask me to redo it because it was too short, so I'm assuming now my root password is my normal password. I'm not sure, because if I, uh, as I'll show you later, <laughs> sudo doesn't actually exist on this system. So, <laughs> um, uh, and, and when I tried to do sudo something, uh, I figured, well, you know, maybe they use do as. No, nope, do as isn't here either, so uh, it's weird. Anyways, here's, <laughs> here's another funny thing. It asked, do you live in Europe? So this is, it's asking you to set the local time, basically. It assumes you live in Europe. If you don't live in Europe, which I don't live in Europe, I mean, always kind of wanted to visit, but I don't live in Europe. I'm a, an American boy, so I hit no, it exits out. So it makes, actually makes you go through, through, and it just sets it as UTC. It doesn't ask, go through and ask you what time zone you're in. You actually have to go through and do that later. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> that's just, I mean, I, I, I don't, why even bother? Just, <laughs> just run this thing here you're in a terminal already just run this thing here and let people set up their time zone it would make a hell of a lot more sense than assuming that you're in europe and if you're not in europe just stopping so we can now close this window so it's gone all right so this is what jwm looks like now the first thing i tried to do and the first thing i always try to do is get myself set up for getting this thing full screen so i tried to use the the gui to do this so i go settings Devices, display monitor, and yeah, 1080, 1080p, 1080p is not there. Uh, why it's not there, I don't know. Uh, so I tried to do XRander. Because we know we're using X. So we should be able to do this. 1920 by 1080. And yeah, that's not there either. So uh, it turns out that the only resolution that's available to JWM, at least the way I have set up, is 768. Uh, 1920 by 768, or not 1920, but whatever it is, uh, we can actually see what it is. It's uh, 1024 by 7, 768. Uh, yeah, so we're not going full screen. All right, so, but that's not a unique thing to 4M Linux. I've had problems getting display things to work on other distributions as well, so I'm not going to be too hard about it. So let's go ahead then 
before we take a look at any of this other stuff and before I you know do anything else let's take a look at the installation now usually with a Linux distribution the the installation thing is right in front of your face or there's an icon on the home you know you on the desktop or in the bar somewhere and uh, yeah you can you can just look you can look for that all you want as far as I can tell there is no button here to install. There's not. So, what would you do? Well, you would look through the documentation. Now, the website has really good documentation on how to install it. But being the person that I am, I didn't look at that documentation first. I instead was looking at the documentation that the distribution comes with. And there is documentation. So, if we go here to Forum Linux in the menu and hit Help. And I apologize that I can't make this any bigger. At least I don't think I can make it any bigger oh I can make it bigger cool let's go ahead and make this bigger cool all right and that way we can zoom in a little bit all right so we're here at the top now you would expect in the documentation the very first thing that they would tell you how to do would be to install it that is not the first thing they tell you to do in fact it's actually the last thing they tell you to do well, other than the, the license and the reports, the, the last thing is installation to hard drive. And this is how they tell you to hard drive. So you have to read through all of the documentation to figure out how to install it. Unless you go back to the website and then look through the documentation there. Uh, which I highly recommend you do because it's better documentation than this. So uh, we have to run this command here in order to install. And like I said, installing is actually fairly easy. So we're just going to go ahead and close this and we'll start a terminal. So by default... 4M Linux comes with bash and it comes with another shell here as well. TCLSH. I've never actually heard of TCLSH before, but I'm not surprised that it exists. There are tons of shells out there that I just ne have never heard of before. So I'm going to zoom in here. And if we run that command that we saw in the documentation, install to HD, uh, we're going to get some error. So we're just going to hit continue and we're going to see error, no partitions found on dev.sda. So this is the most complicated part of installing it and it, it, it's going to require some Linux knowledge. Uh, so you can use fdisk, you can use cfdisk. I use cfdisk because it's easy. So we just go ahead and do a partition. Now I don't know if Forum Linux comes with something like gparted. I can't be sure it does or does not. I cannot I've gone through this. Oh, wait a minute. It does, in fact, have gparted here, but it's not the GUI version, the GUI gparted that you would, you know, expect. It's the terminal version of gparted, which I've frankly never used before. So we're just going to go ahead and create a DOS partition. We're going to do a new one here, full size, primary, and then we're going to write the write it, and then type in yes, and then we're going to quit. That's all there is to doing to make a partition that'll actually work with. So now we're going to do install. To, to HD again, and then we'll enter, and then we will provide the name of the device that we're going to install to. So in this case, it's going to be SDA1. We'll do that, and then do you wish to change this? No. And then is Forum Linux the only operating system on your PC? Yes. And then hit enter, and then do you want to install now? Yes, and it's going to install now. That's literally the installation. That's all there is to it. The hardest part is giving the hard drive a partition. And it's done. <laughs> like, literally, normally at this point, I would say, well, you know what? We're going to pause, and I'll come back when it's done. That was literally the entire installation. That's all there is. So, uh, pro points. This is the fastest Linux insta install I've ever seen. It's the e I'm going to call it the easiest because I know how to create a partition. I guess if you didn't know how to create a partition on a hard drive using CF disk or F disk or gparted, you'd have some problems. But outside of that, it was, I mean, stupidly simple. All right. So we're going to go ahead and shut this machine down. Now, sometimes VirtualBox will remove the ISO. Sometimes it won't. In this case, I know that it won't. So we're going to go ahead and uh, power off and then hit yes. We don't see a Grub menu at all. So whether or not it even installs Grub, I'm not sure. I'm assuming it probably does and it just doesn't show the menu. So how it would work if you're installing this 
on a on a drive that has multiple partitions and multiple distros on it. I don't know. Well, it would have to. It'd have. It'd be something you'd have to find out. I don't have that set up. So, as was before, you're gonna get this the first time you log in. Now, whether or not you'll see this on your next login, I'm not actually sure. We might have to test that out. I haven't tried that. Um, so we're just going to. We don't want to need to change that. We would like to have a word root password. So I'm actually going to enter a very complicated password this time, like actual complicated password. It still says it's too short. <laughs> that was eight letters long. Okay. Okay, and I'm still not in Europe. I haven't magically transported myself to Europe. So I'm just going to hit no here again. And then I'm going to show you how to, to go about setting up the time zones. Because why not? TZ, select. Okay, and then enter, proceed. We're in uh, the Americas. And we're in the United States, which is 49. And then uh, one is fine here as well. Okay, and then uh, one for yes. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that that is a bash script of some kind, but the way they have it set up, you have to actually enter one or two instead of typing yes. So they didn't do the case statement as well as they could have, but we now have the proper time. So what's next? So n normally during this thing, I would go through and install some software. Now, the thing is, is remember at the beginning, I told you that this was an in independent Linux distribution, and then I said that that would be important. It is important because you can't use a standard package manager. There's not apt on the system, there's not pacman, there's not dnf, there's not zipper, there's not eo package, there's not xpbs, there's literally none of that stuff. So, going in, the, the, the biggest problem with this distro that I've come across is that there's no easy way to install software. Now, if you go to the website and search for install and try to through, go through the documentation that way, as far as I can tell, there's no documentation there that tells you how to install software at all. There's just not. Uh, now, there is. If we go here to the helpful documentation, we go through and change the font so we can actually see this again. We'll go back up to 16, do OK, and then maximize this. If we search for, actually, I can just scroll down to it. Again, it, installing software seems fairly important, and it would seem logical that this would be like the second thing in the documentation. Like right after installation, here's how you install, here's how you update the search, especially when you're doing an independent distro that uses its own package manager, which this does. You would think that you would go through and provide that information right up top. Like right after the installation, th that would be the most logical place to put it, but it's not there. And, and instead it actually is all the way down the document. No, um, we're gonna, gonna continue to go. We're gonna continue to go. We're still not there. Nope, still not there. Oh, here we go. Right here, it's actually under 3.4. A uh, 4M Linux packages, so-called add-ons. So this is how you install software, as far as I can tell. So. 4M Linux add-ons are exipped tar archives, which are named in the following way, add-on underscore whatever, and then they are stored in slash var slash 4M Linux. You can easily view their contents with Midnight Commander, which is installed. Uh, you can use the, the script ZK uh, to install packages. So it's a, a simple package manager. It can be used as follows. So ZK add-on underscore... Uh, dot tar dot xz will install add on dot tar dot xz now as far as i know this doesn't actually work that way now i notice here that it says underscore and then star so i'm assuming the name of the package would then go there so we're going to try this here because i didn't notice that before so what i would really like to do is install neofetch so i'm going to go ahead and close this here and I'm going to go to the web browser. Now, by default, there's, as far as I can tell, there's only web, one web browser installed, and that is Pale Moon, which is a really old fork of Firefox. And you can tell it's really old by the fact that, you know, it looks really old. But it's here, and it's functional 
for what it is. You'll find a lot of websites that don't work in it, and you'll find there are a lot of parts of websites that don't don't work with it. So if we go to, if we search for NeoFetch, click on this, and I believe if we try to uh, hit the normal button to get the get clone uh, URL, it just sits here and spins. That's a pale moon thing. It just doesn't work with that. But it doesn't matter because Git's not installed anyway, so we can't actually do things that way. So we're going to go here over here to releases. We're going to scroll down to the releases. This is the tar.gz. I'm, I'm hoping that this script will actually work with a .gz uh, zipped file, and it doesn't have to be the other way around. But we're going to go ahead and try it. There's nothing hurting us from trying it. We're just going to go ahead and save, and then we will get out of this and go back to terminal and we'll cd into downloads the good news is this is just bash all your bash stuff will work just normal uh we'll do this and then what we'll do is i'm gonna go ahead and do an ls and what we're gonna do is do that other thing so i'm gonna have to go back here to remember what it is so it is zk and then add on underscore then the name okay so we're gonna try this so we're gonna do zk add on underscore and then the name which is neo fetch neo fetch if I can spell and then dash seven dot one dot zero dot tar dot gz okay we're gonna hit the enter button and see if this worked maybe it did maybe it did it did not okay so uh, that got closer than it did when I was trying this out earlier uh, earlier it just said uh, you couldn't use it because I was just trying to do zk and then NeoFetch like that. I assumed that it worked like that. And if you hit this, it you know just tells you how to use ZK. So how do you install software? That question remains unanswered. I have no clue. Uh, I'm assuming maybe that the reason why NeoFetch didn't install is because it's .dgz instead of .xz. Frankly, I don't know why they would set it up that way. Um, they're both tar tarred balls. Uh, so why it couldn't handle both, I don't know. So that's just a thing that's we're gonna have to live with. We can't get it in to install software now. The good news is that if you want some other software, there is a way to do it. So if we go up here to extensions, and then we say, let's say we want Firefox. Let's just say Pale Moon is just not doing it for us. Which you know, I wouldn't blame you. Like Pale Moon's not a very good browser. Okay. It's just not. Okay, so let's go here to extensions and then net apps and then Mozilla. And it's like, oh, look, Firefox is installed. No, it's not. Okay, so if we hit Firefox, we're actually going to see a terminal pop up. And it's going to say, would you like to download and install Firefox? So I hit yes. And it's actually going to download and install Firefox. So there is a way to install software. But basically, what this is, does, this is doing is just going through and taking the the tarball of the binary for Firefox and then installing it and then launching Firefox. That's literally what it's doing. Why there isn't an easier way to install other software that also comes in a tarball, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm 100% I'm sure I'm doing something wrong, but without really good documentation, how am I supposed to know? Right? So here we are. We have Firefox installed. Now, that's the thing about forum linux that you have to know there's not a ton of software here installed by default that you would expect there to be installed so if you go here to the net apps chromium's not installed by default vivaldi's not installed by default so you have to install those things just like we did with firefox i'm pretty sure thunderbird is exactly the same way so most of this stuff that's here is not actually installed so if we go to let's just say office and do LibreOffice, it's going to ask you to install it. So most of that stuff, it appears in the menu, but it's not actually here. So there is some stuff, obviously, that's actually here. So uh, we know Pale Moon is installed by default, but I'm guessing that none of this other stuff actually is. So let's let's see if SM Tube is not installed. So SM Player is not here. This is kind of a it's it's kind of a mess because you don't actually know what you're getting. Uh, we know I'm, I'm assuming, there's no way that YouTube BL and and Handbrake or Blender are actually here installed. Those are going to be things that you install. Let's see if VLC is here. VLC is not here. So other than Pale Mood, I'm not actually sure what you actually get. Uh, I'm guessing like VirtualBox, you're going to have to install that like you would with Firefox. Get GUI is going to be the same thing. 
Now here are their games. I'm not going to install all these or even read through them because there are there's a ton of like okay, so let's just see here. Super Tux Kart 2 or Super Tux Kart. You have to install that too. <laughs> uh, so what basically if you do any of those games, you get them all I'm assuming with the 4M Linux game packs. We're going to go ahead yes, there and let that install. Uh, I have noticed in my times where I could get the pre-loaded stuff that's not actually installed but can be installed, I've noticed that the mirrors are, how would you say, really slow. Yeah, they're really slow. Not that surprising. It's just a small Linux distribution, so they're not, they're not paying for a lot of servers or whatever. They probably have one, exactly one server. So I'm not going to you know, poo-poo it that much, but just go no going in if you're going to try this that... Yeah, the the mirrors are slow. Okay, so when you go through and install all those games, you then get this pop up that says Pulse Audio should be disabled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why though? Why? Like we know Pulse Audio is kind of terrible. You should be you should be able to game with it, right? I mean, none of those were. Can I disable Pulse Audio for you? Hell no! You, I don't want you to. Uh, I'm interested to see if any games will launch with it running. I mean, I just want to break something. Uh, anyways, let's go back up here to the games now, and uh, let's see here. Eltris, this is going to be Pulse Audio. So you can't launch any of the games without actually disabling Pulse Audio. Uh, Pulse Audio, and then we have. A full screen version of LTRS, which I'm assuming is going to be Tetris, basically. Yeah, it's Tetris. I've never heard of, of this before, and I'm no clue how to play, which I'm not playing. I don't know what this actually is. Uh, the, the real question is, to get out of this, you just keep hitting Escape, which is probably a good thing. At least it wasn't Control-Delete. Uh, so, yeah, uh, gaming, apparently you can do. It has some games here. But you can't use Pulse Audio with it, which would then lead me to wonder, how do you get sound? Uh, I don't have my headphones on, so I can't tell you if it was actually playing sound, but I'm assuming that it wasn't because it actually killed Pulse Audio. You could see it do it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand, okay? Like, we know that it is possible to have Pulse Audio running while gaming. It's been working for a long time. It'd be like having to shut your internet off every time you wanted to game. Or turning XORG off every time you wanted to game. I mean, <laughs> it's really weird, right? So, uh, yeah, th I'm not going to go through any more of the games. You're free to install this and look at those games if you want. I mean, we all, I mean, fine, we'll go ahead and launch Super Tux Cart and see how this goes. All right, let's see how it goes. You can, keyboard is not working. It was going for there for a minute. Okay, there's no, okay, because it's not full screen when the, the, <laughs> yeah all right let's get out of this you know exit race Good lord uh, why the other one opened up full screen i don't know and why the keyboard wasn't working at all i'm i mean i've only played tux card maybe one time in my entire life but i'm pretty sure there are keyboard controls like it's not an, like a mouse based steering game but i could be wrong about that maybe i'm just misremembering it i thought wasd was the thing that would work so gaming was a fail okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if we go back up here to the up here where it describes the four M's. So remember, this was four different things that it was aiming to do. One of them was maintenance. So theoretically, you could boot into this live environment, the live environment that we were on, and then CH root into a system that you had installed on a hard drive. You could do that, and you'd have to use... So if we go back to the terminal here. So you could go through and do get into the terminal, hit sue, and then uh, if you had a password, which apparently it still didn't take my password. I don't know why it didn't take my password, because now we're in root. We were in root before, because there's no user, there's like no user account here. So you're always running everything as root, as far as I can tell. And that's the reason why there's no sudo or anything, because it doesn't need sudo. It's already in root all the time, uh, as far as I can tell. <laughs> like, I, no, th that is... I, don't ever run everything as root, okay? Just don't do that because that's not... You're going to RM, RF slash or something and you're going to delete your whole system and don't do that. It's not healthy. It's just going to lead to heartache. So you can, in fact, use 4 Linux Live CD to then 
do things in Midnight Commander to back up your files or do whatever you need to do from that. I don't know why you would use this particular brand of Linux to do that. You could use the ISO of the distro you were trying to save, unless this is the distro you're trying to save, but whatever floats your boat. And then I find it entertaining that the second M is for media, but VLC is not installed. I'm not of the things that are here for media apps. I'm not sure what actually is installed. So we know SM2, which is SM Player. Uh, is M Player installed? No. Uh, so how can you be for media if none of the media things that you would, you know, use are def installed by default? Is X9? No. None of these things are installed by default. You actually have to go through and install them, which is fine and dandy. You know, I install software all the time. We all do. If you have good internet, but if you don't have good internet, you have to go through and install the, all this stuff, adding on top of the the ISO that you already had to download. Now, I don't remember what the, the ISO was in terms of size. I'm assuming it's really, really, really freaking small. It says here that MPV is installed. I don't see MPV there. Do you guys see MPV there? <laughs> like, I don't see it. I mean, is that what... I mean, maybe they called it... No, that's M player. I, uh, that's not MPV. That's a different thing. Uh, let's go here for multiplayer. Let's play Keloid. Oh, you wanna? I wonder if this is the stuff that is. Oh, see, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. I think, yeah, all this stuff here is actually installed. Okay. Now, now I understand. So, like, G parted is here. Okay. All right. And let's see. Office Abbey Word is here. Okay. All right. I, I got hung up on this section here. So this is where they use, this is like their little app store. None of these players are going to be, none of these things are going to be installed. But up here, we have some stuff that's actually installed. Okay. It makes you feel a little bit better. <laughs> so if we go to multimedia, we do have things like Minitube and MIDI installed. Uh, let's view GPIC and then edit. Uh, we have Audacity here. It's installed. Devices, but I still don't see MPD. Like, I don't. I don't see MPD. I see Minitube. I don't. I'm assuming that's for playing YouTube videos. So that is for playing YouTube videos, and it's interesting. Okay. So if we go back here and do, yeah, I, a celluloid is that's going to be a that, that's going to be a video player. Okay. Uh, it, it says MPV is played is installed, but I don't I don't see MPV here at all. I don't even see the option to install MPV. PA view is control is here, even though it turns pulse audio off every time you launch a game. Image Magic is here. Conversing, which is a image com or a, yeah, an image conversion thing, is installed by default, which is a weird choice. A lot of stuff for uh, like webcams is installed. Maintenance, we have uh, a few things. We have NNN and MC is installed. PC Man FM is a, the GUI file manager. We have GNU Parted and for partitioning NetWatch. I really was hoping that there would be something here for NeoFetch, but there's not. So there's an antivirus installed by default. wonder what for nerds is here. So we have Vi, MG, Nano is here, MC Edit, Huntspell. Okay. Uh, Internet, NetSurf, HexChat. Eh. NetSurf is a open source web browser that I've literally never heard of before. So that's new. Tor is here. What is... Uh, Gnome PPP is going to be like that phone dialer thing, right? Uh, GWget, Uget is here, but Git wasn't installed by default. Selfie is going to be a uh, um, email client. Uh, really old email client. <laughs> really old. Uh, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure that Selfie is still being developed. It could be. I haven't used it since I first switched to Linux, and that's been four years. So, all right. I think that this has gone on long enough now. There are other things that it supposedly does. Mini server was another thing, and then we looked at the, the games. So, at the end of these videos, which usually go much longer than I expect them to, I usually try to answer the question we started out with, is what the fuck is this distro? Why does it exist? And in this case, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know why this, this distro exists. Now, I'm sure it's possible that the, the guy behind this did this for himself. And I'm sure that's 100% true. Right? So I don't want to deride his effort because it's obvious that he's gone through and put some effort into this. Like, this is an independent Linux distribution. It is really fucking hard to even conceive of, let alone do. I mean, this thing works. 
Like you can install it right now if you want to, and you can do stuff on it. You can play Super Tux Cart. You can go through and text edit and use Vim, which is not, by the way, installed by default, but there is an option to install it, which is a saving grace, I should say. But anyway, so you can do it. So the, the fact that it exists and there's literally probably just one guy behind this is actually fairly impressive. I, I think that, or at least I hope that he or they did it for a for a learning experience. Like they wanted to learn how to do this and so they did it. I hope that that was the case. I hope that there's not actually any expectation that this thing is for other people to use because it's not very good. Uh, I would love to know how to actually install software. <laughs> like, like I would, I'm assuming that the reason why that tar ball didn't install was because it had the wrong extension at the end. Maybe, or, or I was just doing something idiotically wrong, which is also a hundred percent possible. So that is forum Linux. If you've used this before, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from someone who actually used daily drives this thing. If that happens, I will give you a heart like automatically, whether or not you like it or not. And uh, uh, if, if you haven't used Forum Linux, let me know in the comment section below if you would ever actually give this thing a try, because I'm highly interested in that, too. You can follow me on Twitter, at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon, at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is one, two, Patrick L. Primus, Sid A., Marcus Meglin, Jack Snipe Tool, Steve A, Mitchell Art Center, Amateus, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, Beatrice Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.